well-known broadcaster, um, brilliant human being actually, uh, terrific uh, all-round broadcaster in terms of cricket. Um, the AFL, uh, had, uh, what uh, this fellow doesn't know about anything to do with sport isn't worth knowing. It is Mark Howard. Uh, Howie, Howie, good morning to you, my great friend. Smithy, finally, finally I've achieved something on my career. I've been pestering you all summer to get me on your radio show. And you must have had a little spot. But Gilly must have fallen over. You couldn't get hold of Junior, so my phone's rang. Great to speak to you, my friend. How are you? Yeah, actually I had Kath lined up. I had uh, Isha lined up. And I've got you in the end, Howie. Finally, finally, uh, what she said, you, can, you can't have them, but you can have Howie, okay? So there we no, go. No, I expected uh, as much. I expected as much. <laughs> Hey, Howie, uh, on a, a slightly serious note to begin with, low-scoring final, wasn't it? Inter interesting. It, it had its drama, though. Yeah, it did. And, Smithy, you saw that SCG pitch throughout the Test match and over the summer. It was always going to be low-scoring. It was basically like rolled mud. Uh, but, gee, it was an upset. You know, we can talk about the details of the game, but the Sixers had won eight in a row on their home patch. They went in as stronger favourites as you can really get in a two-horse race. And somehow Brisbane, without their... Without their test superstars, four of them managed to scrape home for a win. So it's funny, Smithy, isn't it? This game that, that we love is often based around high scores and sixes and fours in T20 cricket, yet where it's the close games, like if you look at the scoreboard, you think, oh, they did it easy, but there was some real tension before Nisa hit those four boundaries that you, that you just played in the intro. Yeah, and, and very interesting. Uh, I'll get to Nisa very quickly, but um, what a shame, um, you know, because the interest really came back into the tournament, and particularly on the back of the sixes with Steve Smith, that the big boys just couldn't quite hang around long enough to play in the final. Yeah, and it's scheduling, you know. We know how it works, but I, I was there two Saturday nights ago when Smith scored his second 100 in a row, um, and Smithy, that's a good innings that I've seen. Um in T20 cricket. He was unbelievable, obviously, you know, with, with the test taking precedence. So it was a shame that the test boys weren't there. But for Brisbane to be able to put that out on the park and get that done last night at a mark, well, they'll have a massive challenge. You know, I'm about to jump in a, in a plane and go uh, in the airport now to head off to Perth, where it's meant to be 37 degrees. So it'll be, you couldn't get a more different wicket that um, they're going to be facing. But, yeah, well done to Brisbane. But the Sixers will be bitterly disappointed. They, they won 10 games throughout the home and away, whereas Brisbane won... Six, but you know, a couple of performances swing it, and that's what happened last night, my friend. Yeah, that's what happened. Gee, that niece is a good cricketer. He must be desperately unlucky not to. It just shows the depth of of Australian quick bowlers, really. Um, because Michael Nisa is he'd make most sides around the world. Yeah, and he was fantastic last night, and he spoke to to Gilly pre-game, and he spoke about the fact without Marnus and and Renshaw there, and obviously the People's Champ was Kawaja that the senior players needed to step up. Now you expected that to be with the ball, but the ball didn't really swing, and it was all about the the slow bowlers. But to come out there, I think the second top score was Dan Hughes with 23 to make 48 off 30 odd rocks and win the game with the bat just shows you how good he is. And, and like uh, New Zealand, mate, we figured out which of the South Africans are good, and we tempt them over here like Marnus and uh, and hold on to them, as you guys have done very well too. Right, Howie, uh, let's uh, get uh, on to the Border Gavaska coming up as well, uh, one of Ooh. the great trophies in world cricket. Man, that is a mouth-watering prospect coming up. Yeah, it is, and it comes in in a great time zone, especially here in Australia. I think it's 2.30, Smithy, so uh, I'm heading off to... I'm going to Costa Rica next week to go uh, for a surf, so I haven't figured out where our Costa Rica <laughs> brothers are showing it, but I'm sure it'll be somewhere. They're not renowned cricket lovers, but I know Mark War's going over. He leaves on Tuesday. Um, the Aussies are already there. There was a bit of a visa issue with Usman Khawaja, but it's... It's funny, isn't it? Where, you know, I, I grew up Australia, England, the Ashes, Australia, England, the Ashes. And then early 2000s, the border Gavaskar sort of moved into importance. And now it, it's as um, anticipated as series, especially with the time zone. So it's going to be a cracker. Um, Australia haven't won there since the great Gilly captained us back in 2004. Do you reckon they can get it done or do you think the spin of the Indians will eventually prevail? I think they'll doctor the uh, they'll doctor the pitches to their liking, um, particularly if they don't have a lot of confidence in their pace attack. Um, I, I think you'll be facing a barrage of spin, which is going to put a lot of heat on two or three players in particular, and it's going to see for me. I mean, one of the players to me of the summer for you was Travis Head, uh, notoriously mm. uh, not so good against spin. This is going to be a real test, I think, for your middle order. 
Yeah, I think you're right. Um, I'm not sure the test will go five days. Talking to Junior last night, he's been canny, though. He's done a deal where he gets paid per test, not per day, <laughs> Smithy. So if it's a two-day, he still gets a full five-day whack. That's that's the genius <laughs> of Mark Warren. and those listening. That, that's the type of thing you need to think about when you're heading off on these overseas commentary tours <laughs> as to the structure in the contract. Because especially in Nagpur, I don't, I don't think we're getting a five-day. Uh, oh, I think... I think we could be in for something special from Steve this Smith, though, Smithy. You, you saw him over the summer. You saw what he did in the big bash with that refined technique where he can access the ball more on the offside. I, you know, I think it could be a crowning glory for Steve Smith. I think he's that good and he's in such good form and he'll be so determined. I can't wait to see him face the Indian spinners. It, it's going to be one of the test battles of the year, no doubt. Well, you interviewed him during a rain break in Sydney. I'll, I'll never forget this because he was so disappointed he got out after making 100 because he wanted yeah. to practice for India from that point yeah. onwards in terms of his technique. I mean, how, um, how seriously and how, um, how small a window does he have when it comes to that kind of thinking about his game because he is so precise. I mean, imagine practicing in the middle of a test match uh, <laughs> once you've got to 100 to try a different technique that you might use in future test matches. It's extraordinary, isn't it? And I think that shows that the truly top of their tree can think... I, I um, spent my early years working on Formula One, Smithy, and Michael Schumacher was a gun driver, but when you listen to the radio, he had enough mental capacity to start directing the team as to strategy and when they took put shot pit stops and which tyres they should go for because he was so good at what he did, he had spare mental capacity. And I reckon that Smithy, mate, he, it was extraordinary when he said that. Uh, as you say, he's going to practice a different technique on a different wicket to prepare for India. And I, I think that's because he's so on top of his game. And he doesn't need all his mental faculties that mere mortals at test level need to be able to concentrate on batting. So, yeah, I, I, that shows the genius of the man. I think my man too, Usman Kawaja, I think uh, I think he could be in for something special as well, Smitty. He's, he's had a big summer, named the Alan Border Test Player of the Year for Australia in the, in the um, Test Team of the Year. So it, he'll need big runs as well at the top of the order. Uh, one of the great things that uh, you bring to cricket coverage um, and... and it's, it's something that a, a lot of broadcast partners around the world would love to have is uh, your relationship with the players, um, your access to the players. How do you manage that? How, how do you, I mean, you know, you talk to players in, in pretty vital situations. I mean, who would ever think you could fr fly a camera down on a drinks break and a guy who's 75 not out could talk to Mark Howard uh, about how things are going out there? I mean, how, do you, how have you managed to bring these relationships into coverage? Thanks, Minnie. I appreciate that. I think, one, the technology to have the ability to do it. But I think, two, sort of five years, especially working with the, with the Australian team alongside them, um, just being genuine and being positive, you know, as someone that hasn't played the game um, at, at a level where any of you superstars have, uh, I can just be positive. I don't have to say anything critical. So you're positive. It's not my job to critique them. It's just to talk about what's happening. So just to foster that relationship, be positive around them and always champion them, whether they're Australians or Kiwis or um, South Africans, just celebrate them as truly wonderful athletes. And I think I think that goes a long way. And the, and the touring teams come out and you need to establish a relationship quickly. But I think that they see that, that you're positive and that you're not asking awkward questions or you're not casting doubts on performance. You're just going from a positive angle and you're genuinely interested in what they do and how they do it. And then the touring teams jump on board that as well. But it's certainly um, a privileged position to be in. Um, and I don't take it lightly. But as you say, with, with Fox, to have the ability to, to float down and talk to a batsman on 70 not out or or speak to a West Indian in the warm-up when he's in the slips cordon and be able to wander over there and, and have a smile on your face and have a crack at it, it's um, it's a fantastic, fantastic part of the job. But uh, to summarise it, Smitty, I think positivity goes a long, long way in life and, and in sports coverage. Yeah, totally agree. Um, you've nailed it, I've got to say. And uh, on this side of the Tasman... We would be most jealous of uh, the way you're able to go about it, Howie. Uh, which brings me to the big break, which is uh, the lunchtime show that you host <laughs> and your, relation your relationship with the great man, the great Kerry O'Keefe, the skull. What a genius. 
Yeah, he is. Um, and you and him combined nicely this year. Um, and you really brought the octogenarians into the broadcast, which I think is fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> on, on your age level, you you blokes are like the two Muppets that used to dominate uh, up in the top and look down, Stadler and Waldorf. But it, it's a joy, isn't it? Again, 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 that show, mate. Um, I grew up watching a very, very different lunch show, but I've always thought that we are in the entertainment business and that there's a lot of options. You know, you can watch Netflix or you can watch Amazon or you can watch other things on you can watch other sports so i think we've always tried to provide something a little bit different on the big break and you and kerry are different who thought two really old washed up blokes had actually become a hit but you have so so i think i think it's credit to you too um but in all seriousness skull um he, he is a genius he he's a comedian cricket analyst and there, there aren't many of those floating around the only other one i can think of on his sort of par is David Bumble Lloyd who I haven't had the privilege of working with but to, to sit there um, with you and Kerry and just see the delight in your face and and you're laughing and having a good time in a in a test match lunch break it um, it does fill me with joy mate oh Kath just walked past so I don't know why she burnt you for that interview Smithy but she's just walked past and Gilly's not far away so you should try them in a moment you might be able to get hold of the real superstars no, I, I need ratings. I need ratings. Uh, I don't want Kath. Uh, I, I, I don't want Gilly. I, 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 need, I, need, I need ratings if you could pass that on. Uh, I, I'll tell you what, if they know you're talking to me, they'll keep walking past on the chance that they might get a word in, but it's not going to happen. Uh, I can promise you that. Uh, oh, look, uh, the other thing uh, that is um, of interest to me too is uh, the Howie Games, of course. Uh, Howie, the, you're synonymous with this is probably the most... So- popular podcast maybe in the southern hemisphere i don't know maybe in the bloody world but um hell, it's been so it's so it's so damn successful man um that uh, you're finally getting some return out of it what are you, what have you got coming up in terms of the howie games and prospect who would you really like to get well the next podcast that comes out in the howie games you can get it anywhere it's a lot of sort of athletes the next podcast is pat cummins so I, i'm in Coogee now smitty a spot you know well and you know the hotel well i sat down with pat a week and a half ago as he was getting ready to go to India. Um, and I love everything about him because he's he's a man that has the courage of his convictions, Smitty, but he's also got the courage to put them out there in a public sphere, whether it's backing his own teammates when everything was happening with Justin Langer and he was getting criticised by former players or whether it's talking about the environment and using his celebrity, for want of a better term, to shine a light. Um on, on where he's at and what his views are. So Pat Cummins next, then Lauren Jackson, who is a legendary Australian basketballer, who for mine, for the listeners that aren't aware, I reckon's pulled off one of the, if not the greatest comeback in the history of Australian sport to come back six years retired and all of a sudden be playing for the Australian Opals again. But the one, Smitty, and and you're connected, so maybe you can help me. Um, after announcing his second retirement, um, Tom Brady be handy, mate. It took me four years to get Kelly Slater on the show, my sporting hero, alongside Alan Border. Um, but uh, I don't know, SCN New Zealand, have you got a number for Tom Brady? Because oh, he'd be outstanding. So um, anything there in the, in the little Smitty phone book or not? Well, I can't put it over publicly because everyone will be ringing Tom. But I, I do <laughs> think I might have uh, something for you there. I do. I, I know a bloke who's got a uh, who had a photo with him recently, so maybe there's a connection <laughs> there. We'll see what we'll, we'll see what we can do. Um, uh, just finally, why do they laugh at Skull's jokes over there and not mine? There's only a very simple summation and explanation I can give you that, Smitty. That's because Skull's jokes are funny. And yours are real lowbrow, low rent, unfunny material. So, uh, you know, I hate to say it, great man, but he's funny and you're not. And, you know, I used to like Nathan Lyon as well, but the pair of you can go and get whatever. (laughs) (laughs) Well, well, for those that aren't aware, Skull tells jokes in 15 seconds and they're real crisp. And then. And then Smithy told a joke about Juventus and Zebra that, that he can tell you on this radio show, but it'll go over three breaks. So that might slow you down a little bit. And Nathan did critique it and didn't think it was that good. But Smithy, maybe in the next hour of the show, you can run that joke out over three or four segments and see if you get a better reception. Maybe it was lost in translation between Australia and New Zealand. I think they're calling that uh, at flight to Perth, Howie. I hope you. I, I hate to think that you. I'd hate to think you're sitting in business class, really. 
<laughs> well, I am, I am. But if you tell that joke, I'll miss my flight by forty-five minutes. I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> love talking to you, mate. Uh, I, I absolutely, yeah. but I, I, I love working with you more. Uh, you're, I, I, I think you're a bloody genius myself, anyway. So, hey, great to catch up, mate, and uh, hopefully we'll do it again soon, eh? Thanks, Smithy. And just before you do hang up, um, I told you over the summer, and I hope. I know people understand in New Zealand the genius of you in broadcasting and you're my favourite cricket commentator and I think you're the best in the world. And the other thing I wanted to say is a shout-out to everyone in Auckland. I, I saw those pictures last week and hopefully everyone's getting back and safe and into their homes and um, and the rain stays away for a bit longer. But uh, good on you, mate. You're an absolute superstar. Thanks for finally, after me pestering you for six months, getting me on your show. I'll send you the invoice tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I know you will. I know you will. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Howie, no, uh, thanks, mate. Uh, fly safely. Uh, big hello to Gilly and nothing at all for Kath. Thanks, mate. Cheers. Righto. I'll let him know. See you, mate. Che- cheers, boy. Uh, it's Mark Howard. Absolute brilliant bloke. Uh, you know, aside from uh, aside from commentary, I'd, I'd uh, really uh, love to meet. I'd love to be just around him as a friend. He, he's a terrific company. Uh, enthusiastic, positive. The glass isn't half full for Howie. It is overflowing every day. I promise you. Uh, he just enjoys everything about life. He's got a great family. He's got a couple of great kids called uh, Pickle and the Penguin. Uh, they surf with him. They, he plays cricket in the backyards. He takes his son to cricket. He takes immense pride in what they're doing. I mean, he's just a bloody good bloke. That's Mark Howard.